broken up like with hair like this it looks like it belongs in like a 1930s dictator Germany you can fix it with one of these handmade by moi not handmade hand drawn hit me up in the in the DMs or PMs this is a total continuation of the Cambo video that I did early on in this channel's history in fact like one of the first ones that was actually popular before the regular videos just showed up check it out Cambo Actis like for the GFX go to GFX here let's try it on doesn't fit <laughs> let's try another camera but look at that that bad boys and bad girls that there is the Canon EOS R attached to the Cambo which originally got for the GFX with an extended like 300 millimeter rail let's collapse this bad boy here just shove it right in even with the long bellows you can get in pretty close um, now we'll use the the rear shoe guide it all the way in we can get flat there and of course that's going way beyond infinity for this 120 millimeter lens now I don't have the short bellows for this bad boy here with me so you're just going to be looking at the long 300 millimeter rail as well as the long extension bellows as you know they just pop off magnetically like that and like that which is pretty cool let's spin the cannon here and the cambo just like that so you got a lot of room in between the camera and the back of the lens again you can add some more extension and get insane magnification but for this purposes here I just wanted to show you what the bellows look like here and collapsed they're like that so you can get really close into each other watch this the camera to the lens mount if you had the shortest bellows it would probably get about that close as you can see there's not much room between the mount and the well the front mount and the back mount with the longer bellows though it's not going to compress that far so let's just check snap these bad boys on like gotta make sure it's the right side there we are the right side and to the back ah, there we are gets in that far and that will be beyond infinity for this lens but something like a 60 millimeter lens is probably just about an infinity right there if you want to go to macro course you just start scooting back on the shuttle as well as the foot and there we are full extension locked in place these little locks are decent they're easy to get to they're handy in a right spot but they can come undone and they're very small so if you have really big hands you might have a hard time turning these little locks the focus levers as well as the uh, the shift knobs and the, the rise and the fall they're pretty good I like the bubble levels here they're really good um, in general the the tilt and the, the swing functionality is really good on this thing the gearing for all the major dials here that are on teeth gears is not as smooth as something like the Ball Pro from Novaflex or the Lienhoff M679 CS there's also a tiny bit of play when you move the dial just a bit I would say like I don't know one tenth of a millimeter in either direction but it's enough that it disconnects you slightly from the focus experience again the Ball Pro doesn't have that problem and the Lienhoff didn't have that problem either so I wish that there was rise on the front standard it's only on the rear standard and that's just right here so you kind of have to do things reverse if you're used to doing rise on the front standard you got to do drop on the back standard overall it's my favorite compact bellows that I've ever used the only proviso of course again is that I wish that the gearing was smoother fitting the Canon to the Cambo is exactly like fitting the GFX to the Cambo mount I'll just show you how solid it is okay I'm pulling up I'm not joking I'm pulling up pretty hard as hard as I can I don't want to pull up the tri like I can pull up the tripod just like that no problem so I just want to show you and I'm not I'm not that weak someone called me an incel I've got a kid so I don't know if incels are strong or weak or not and here is the Canon one it says Canon uh, engraved just right up there so you just do the same thing you pop it in on these two posts there and uh, why is it not going in lock it with this little uh, lever here and then you pull it you know you pull up the, the tripod as well and uh, there it is pick up your cannon lock it in up with the, the red dot in your, in your cannon mount right there and uh, there you go you just pop it like that spin it and if you want to go landscape or uh, this is landscape you want to go portrait just pop this bad boy here and it locks in 90 degrees from there 
Does it go any farther? Nah, it doesn't go any farther. But you can go back down there. Does it go any farther still? Nah, it just rotates 90 degrees. So you're not gonna be able to do the free rotate that you do on like the NovaFlex. And I haven't done a bit a video about the NovaFlex, but I, I hope to be, be doing a video of the NovaFlex pretty soon. This is a great camera system. The Canon R works really well on it. It's a little bit better than GFX in terms of just being able to keep up a good refresh rate uh, for focusing on macro. But it's not gonna keep up with your Leica SL or your Fujifilm X-T3 or even, and this is kind of embarrassing to say, your Canon ATD. Of course, you can do all your, your crazy like uh, ups and downs, stuff like that, because it's, you know, it's a bellows camera with a, you know, a good range of movements. Like, I didn't show it all the way before, but see if we can go all the way around. I can get just about like a 360 degree rotation. It's a little bit tiring. This is where you kind of wish I wasn't an incel. By the way, buy a hat. I mean, if I'm doing this anyway, buy a hat. 10 bucks basically, but ten, another 10 bucks for shipping. It's got an Arca Swiss integrated into the camera itself. Isn't that freaking awesome? So the entire thing you can mount, like that's kind of dangerous probably, but you can mount it all the way from the nose. That's, you know, probably wouldn't want to take photographs like that. You can do all the way to, the, better lock this thing, lock this thing down before I try to push it too much. All the way down to the bum, like right there, right there, or the heel. I'm not sure what you call it. Look at that. <laughs> that is crazy. Then you just put on the, you know, magnets, which is cool. You just gotta make sure that the big end goes front like that, and you pull it. <laughs> like the whole thing is a mount. It's like a crane you can like hit. It's like no, out of the way. <laughs> like that. What a camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the GFX and the Canon, I'm going to put them back here on the same place. We're going to focus on the same thing. We're not going to change any sort of like angle or whatever. We're just going to shoot. And the lens that's going to shoot everything is probably this one or maybe 100 millimeter Gineron, something like that. The GFX can go 35 millimeter mode and the reason is clear. If I change the lens, the quality of everything changes from the angle of the shot to the distance to the subject. To the, I mean, the lens is the final thing, or the first thing, I suppose, that determines how an image looks from everything. <laughs> so I'm not gonna change that. Despite syncing both cameras to the same gray card at the same angle and all that, there is definitely a slight blue cast to the GFX image. Apart from that, however, it's obvious that the GFX has a slight resolution advantage, even though both cameras are basically the same megapixels when the GFX is in crop mode. It's like 30 versus 31 or 30 versus 32, something like that. And I guess that it comes down to the fact that the EOS has a low pass filter, whereas the GFX lacks one completely. But if you have good sharpening technique under your belt, I think you'll find that the EOS R is more than able to basically go toe to toe, just about maybe minus one toe with the GFX in crop mode. So it seems to be a pretty damn good 30 megapixel camera. But of course, if you want to do the whole shebang, you do 50 megapixel in the GFX and uh, change the lens, change the angle, whatever like that. And there'd definitely be a number of advantages for the GFX that you don't see here. However, at most normal print sizes, I don't really know if there's going to be a much of a difference or even on web. Anyway, both are great cameras and Campbell have basically nailed all the functionality that you need for either camera. And if you guys are into like super macro or you need to have a bit of movement to increase the depth of focus or make it super shallow like you do see stuff on, on YouTube whenever people get the tilt shift lenses, well, the Campbell's got you covered. In fact, you didn't even twist the uh, the mount 360 degrees and bugger off with the, in, with the entire bellows part. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, leave a thumbs up. If it wasn't, leave two thumbs down in the uh, undone style and uh, leave a comment either way. And uh, buy a hat and subscribe. I'll see you later.